any questions about this so far? We've been doing microservice communication, having one microservice call to other microservices. Uh, we're doing a lot of things wrong here. Um, we're going to fix all that using service discovery next. But before we go there, any questions, comments? Both the calls are synchronous. synchronous. You wait around for it. So when this line executes, you have an instance available. So it's all synchronous now. The way to do asynchronous is hiding in the comments here. We took that out. But that's how you would do it. But then you would also not do the block here. If you do the block, you're converting from asynchronous to synchronous. If you want truly asynchronous APIs, your controller has to return an asynchronous object back. It has to return a mono or a flux object back. But we're not doing that for this course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. When you deploy an application on a servlet container, there are a lot of threads that do run in parallel. And you have each request typically spawns a new thread. And it's important for all these objects to be thread safe. REST template is thread safe. You're not going to be, one call is not going to affect another call. So you're typically fine in this kind of situation. Yes. Is there any recommendation like when do you, like you always? Based on the documentation, it looks like the feature is always web client. Let me show you. Maybe they've changed it now. Let's see. Uh, Rest template. Let's look at the official documentation. Okay, so this is what it says. As of 5.0, the non-blocking, reactive, this should all make sense to you guys now. The reactive web client offers a modern alternative to REST template with efficient support for both sync and async. Well, you are kind of doing sync um, so it also has streaming scenarios. There's a lot of other, other benefits for, our, for using web client. I'm not going to deny that. But here's the thing. The REST template will be deprecated in a future version. They haven't told when and will not have major new features added going forward. So at some point of time, it's going to go away. If you look at code bases today, you're going to see REST templates throughout, right? which is why I've kind of taught you guys both. So you can use whatever you want. But yeah, based on the official documentation, the recommendation is use web client whenever possible. And asynchronous programming is kind of fun sometimes. Any other questions? Can you say that again, please? Mm -hmm. some other service which is not a microservice. Yeah, that's totally feasible. It's common for that to happen. And uh, I have constructed a scenario in this whole application where you will be doing that. So you see this uh, web, the movie info service is, oh, let me open this guy here. It's returning movie information, right? It's a hard-coded name. What if there is some other service uh, available online which gives you movie information and you want to integrate with that? This would be a good place to do it. You can still use REST template because REST template doesn't care what the implementation in your remote API is. It could be Spring. It could be something else. All it cares about is you get a JSON payload. All it can technically care about is the JSON payload because it has no idea what's creating that JSON payload. It doesn't even know. It cannot know. So you use REST template for those scenarios, and it's perfectly reasonable to have your microservices make external calls to other APIs, may or may not be microservices, but very likely they're going to be REST. You can also have SOAP calls if 
that's something that you need. But I wouldn't recommend using SOAP in a microservice world. But yeah, it is very much feasible. Any other questions before we move on? Yes. How is the security under Security, that's a good question. So there are a lot of ways you can make sure these calls are secure. One is using HTTPS. Another is uh, using authentication. You can have the REST template call be authenticated. Uh, it could be something as, as simple as basic authentication where you just put in the credentials in the header, or it can be something a little more uh, complicated. But that's how we would do it. 